back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. I just picked up the new Emirati highlighter. I wanted to do a video kind of on that highlighter, but I didn't want the video to just be based on that highlighter, you know. That would be a waste of a whole video just on one this video. I wanted to kind of recreate the look she did for the photo shoot for her highlighter. She did kind of like a bronzy look with a nice bronzy cut crease if you guys can see that so for my brows today i'm gonna be using the anastasia beverly hills brow define i'm gonna be using as many anastasia products as i have i did not pick up their new bronzer or blush So I'm actually first, normally I don't do this, but I really want to put the highlighter on my brow bone first because I notice after I do my eye look and then I go in with my brow highlight, it always kind of takes away a little bit of the um, crease eyeshadow. So here is the highlighter packaging. Here's how it's looking. And on the back, it just has information about the highlighter ingredients, a little quote from Ann Reezy on, you know, why she did the collab and all of that. So when you slide it out and open it, here is the actual packaging of it. It has stars all over it, and it says Anastasia Beverly Hills Ann Reezy. Turn it to the back, has the same information it does on the box. Open it, push this little button from the bottom, open it, and it comes like this. On the mirror, it just has an Anastasia Beverly Hills sticker on it, and you can remove the plastic. So here is the actual highlighter. On the site, it labels this as a light gold highlighter. I am obsessed with the product, how they packaged it. I love how it just looks like a wave. So I'm just gonna do a little swatch of it. Nothing on my finger. Looks so beautiful. Here is the swatch of it. So when digging my brush into it for the brow bone highlighter, I do kind of feel like you have to get through the top layer of the found, I mean the foundation highlighter to really get to the more pigmented part. I feel like it has one of those types of layers on it that you have to kind of like, you know. For the eyes, since we're doing more of like, since I'm going to be taking some pictures and stuff and doing something based on um, a photo shoot, I'm going to be using a HD primer which of course means high definition. Uh, HD primer just helps like when you take pictures, it helps the um, product to look better in pictures and have better quality. They're really good when taking pictures and they're also not supposed to leave any flashback. I'm just gonna set the crease part, not the actual lid, but I'm just gonna set the crease with a little bit of Makeup Forever Translucent Powder. Doing any type of look, the best thing to do is just set the crease part because that's where you're going to be blending the eyeshadows at and you want them to be as smooth as possible. But I do feel like when applying powder to the lid, it kind of takes away on the, um, it takes away the eyeshadow, the pigmentation of it. So it's just best to create a nice slip 
on the um, crease area rather than the whole lid. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be using the Sultry palette. So to help me create this cut crease look, I'm going to be using some tape. Applying the tape right where my crease is at. And right at the end of my brow bone. So right here. Hope I did not, I mean not my brow bone, hope I didn't put it on my brow. I'm gonna take it off and it rips off. Right here. Alright, so that's about where I want it. Take the shade Zing. And I'm going to apply this directly into my crease, buffing it out. take a little bit of the shade nimble right here and apply just a little bit of that over the um brown shade because i cannot tell it may just be a, like a bronzy shade that sh they used i may be seeing things but it does kind of look like she has a little bit of a purple in there i don't know if you guys can see that but it does <laughs> back in with some of that zing, zing, zing shade just to help me blend zing and nimble together I don't want it to look too brown and I don't want it to look too purple so I'm just going back in with both just to help me blend it out So I think I want it to look something like that, but I do want to add a little bit of this shade Risky, just to keep popping everything. <laughs> and I want to put the shade Risky directly onto the crease area. So I'm going to use an angled brush to help me achieve that look. I'm going to go back into a little bit of Zing and Nimble, both shades together. The blending brush just to blend it out. It was just peel the tape away. Like that. Oh, it looks like one of those like lifted floating. Oh. Why is this starting to turn into it? It wouldn't be a Sahara video, something didn't fall. People came out with, I feel like I just pulled some hair. <sighs> okay, so that's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. Cut the crease, taking some concealer. This is the LA Girl Pro Concealer. So I'm gonna use this brush. This is my favorite brush to cut the crease with, to clean up the brow bone area. It's a Cala brush. Got it from Marshalls a long time ago, but I just love this brush. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Oh boy. Sealers going into my crease look. Alright, that's not good. <coughs> it's just go in with the highlighter with my finger and apply it all across the lid. Alright. Not bad. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye, then clean this eye up, then I'm going to do the rest of my face. Some of my MAC Prep and Prime. I got this little sample when I purchased some MAC lipstick. I haven't used this primer in so long, so I don't remember how it 
even works, but I'm gonna give it another shot. Feels very smooth on the skin. For foundation, because I want very full coverage, and I found that this does give me full coverage, I'm gonna go in with my black opal stick foundation in the shade Honey. I mean, Heavenly Honey. Mario Badescu spray. Love this spray. Some of my Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Kit in the shade Medium. For a more bronze look, I'm going to go in with the cinnamon shade. I'm just going to spray a little bit with some Amaro Badescu spray just to loosen the product up. Taking my brush and going into that cinnamon shade. So I think I'm also going to go in with some of the yellow shade as well. The new blender from Sonia Kashik. These look so beautiful. I'm going to be trying it out today. Look how beautiful it looks. It's like a marble. Feels really nice. Feels pretty squishy. It has a flat bottom and a pointier top. I'm gonna drench it with some Fix Plus spray. So this is the one that I just sprayed and this is the original one before it gets sprayed. It does not look like it got any bigger. Maybe it's because I didn't like wet it with water and I just did it with some Fix Plus spray. I'll just use the bottom side to blend out this part it's such a soft blender i really like this blender Set, i'm gonna go in with my beauty bakery flower powder in the shade yellow guys i really feel like it brings back the color rather than going in with a white translucent one that's never really translucent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Continue with like a bronzy glowy look like Amnesia had. I'm gonna use the glow kit and that glow. I'm gonna use this shade Golden Bronze and bronze up my skin a little bit. So I think I may just skip out on the blush. <laughs> so I have three types of brushes that I can highlight with the Morphe. M501 brush, the Equal Tools fan highlighting brush, and I'll get to this fan brush in a sec, and the e.l.f. tapered small brush, which is kind of like the Morphe M501 brush. They're both tapered brushes, but this one is the thicker size of this. But the reason that I love this type of fan brush is because, as you can see, it's very, very thick and dusty, and it's not something that's going to apply like you know how with a lot of fan br brushes it'll apply like a sheer amount of it or apply it kind of like patchy splotchy and stuff like that i don't like how that looks so i really love this fan brush i think this is what i might use here's the highlight again i'm gonna use the fan brush sweep through it let's see how it applies Mmm, that looks so pretty. Has some nice glowed, glowed, gold reflex to it. <laughs> this big fan brush is literally the size of my little two head. Are you serious? <laughs> I really do want to apply it right here as well. I never apply it on my collarbone area. 
has a nice glow to it. I feel like more. Let's see, let me put it on the side. Not really seeing much on the shoulders though. If I could come out with my own makeup collection, I would want the packaging to look like this. This is such a beautiful wave. So as I was going through the highlighter, you guys see how it looks like there's little tiny holes in the highlighter. So it looks like that what it's doing is like that little first layer, like that film that usually goes on top of a product. Maybe that means that It'll be even more pigmented once you get through the first layer. So let me show you guys again so you can see it. You guys can see those little tiny holes that's in it. That's what I had to do to another product I had. I had to like scrape off the top part because that wasn't as pigmented. And then when I got to the next layer, it was like pure pigment. I didn't. I don't understand how brands do the, how that happens, but that's what it looks like it's happening with this product right here for the bottom lash line this is how M. Reezy's look so I'm going to start off by using the shade risky and I'm gonna apply that right close to my lower lash line So I'm going to take a mixture of the shade Zing and the shade Nimble and blend both of those on the lower lash line. Like I did put a little bit too much of that other shade on, but it's fine. It's fine. Alright, so I think I'm going to keep it like that because I feel like I did put a little bit too much of that risky shade on. She did not have that much of a smoky lash line. Sahara, what did you do? Some liquid liner. This is the liner in NYC. So this is how the wing looks. Let's see what we're working with. Look pretty, pretty fierce. See, I'm just do across the lid first <laughs> and then go back. Oh, that looks better than that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, so I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit actually. I'm gonna take a little bit of my foundation just to clean it up. Okay, now they're both more even so i'm gonna just let it go for the inner corner highlight because if i do one more video and forget the inner corner highlight thick lash pretty drama so i'm gonna go in with my faux mink lashes from kiss lashes and lash couture in a shade in a shade in a style gala Yes. There's so much lash glue on this one that the lashes are stuck together. That's why they don't look as feathered out as this one. See that? But you see how these lashes are stuck together? I don't know how to clean them up to get that lash glue off of the actual lash. Comment down below if you guys know how to get the lash glue off of the actual lash. So now moving on to the lip. For lips, because I'm trying to use as many Anastasia Beverly Hills mm, products as I can. <laughs> One of these shades. This is Hudson. So she had on like a really glossy lip. So it's pretty much dried down all the way. So I'm going to go in with this e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss. Pretty. It's in a shade Mocha Twist. Look is finally complete. Let me know what you guys think. Let me zoom in so you guys can see the eyes as well. 
I, ow. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. I really enjoyed recreating a look. I've never done, well, I have done this before actually, but leave, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye!